All right, guys, welcome again to the Winner's Circle, where we bring you amazing people from entrepreneurs to professionals to ordinary people that are doing extraordinary things in South Africa and beyond. And today, I have a very uh, good friend of mine, amazing entrepreneur, uh, Mr. Neil Eliason. He's the, he's the founder, you're the founder of Vesa, right? Yeah. He's the founder of Vesa properties and he he calls himself an ordinary man isn't it <laughs> just an ordinary guy just, just an ordinary <laughs> guy <laughs> but a lot of people don't know a lot about you i mean because nothing about you is found anywhere except the business that you do you know i always say that i'm more interested in the story of a man uh, any accolades is more the glory you know a lot of us can clap neil has achieved this we clap but we don't know the hardships you've had to go through to become the man that you are and achieve the things that you've achieved. Has it always been easy? Tell us your story, man. Cool. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, glad our paths have crossed again uh, <laughs> many times. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think just what you said, exactly that is that, um, you know, everyone can kind of see what's out there on on linkedin everyone can see what's out there on social media or whatever you know wherever you want to put it um but uh it's, no one really knows the, the stories behind and for sure for sure i've had uh hard times just like everyone else um you know mm -hmm. um I, I never like to say this to my teams or anything like this but times are tough the economy is, is tough you know um macro microeconomics is is tough and people feel it um why well, i say i don't like that to to say that to my team because you know we don't like to give guys excuses um whether it's valid or not but um for sure there's always hardships i mean mm. so where are you from where, where did you start um where did you cool how much, how much time high you school, have? primary how much time <laughs> don't know how much time we've got time okay cool let's let, let's skip uh you know you go? we'll go kind of straight to my um work experience yeah um I came, I did my BSc honors in uh, property studies at the University of Cape Town. Um, always been keen on property my whole life. That's pretty much all I know. Um, studied property. And then from there, um, straight out of school, well, while, while studying, actually, I had the fortunate opportunity to, to do a bit of property flipping um, with my family and some partners. You know, we identified some um, opportunities in um, Cape Town. Yeah. where the property market was hot and you, you know property was extremely sexy what, what and, year was this um this was between 20 12 and 20 2012 and 2013 um still kind of like just coming out of varsity doing my honors um where we where we had that opportunity and kind of in quite an informal capacity i was flipping properties where i got a bit of experience in in, in that regard um we were very very fortunate um that it was just before property in Cape Town exploded, um, you know, which in my mind, I was like, oh, this is easy. Yeah, this is how you want to make money just in property. But, um, you know, it was very, it was a very lucky time, which so you, you were know, coming in low selling high or yeah, at the, at the time, but, um, you know, those opportunities don't necessarily exist. Well, they, they do exist, but they're, you know, they're not so readily available. Um, and, and times kind of are a bit tougher, but anyway, so, so that was that, um, I then, decided to leave my very fortunate and relaxed kind of lifestyle in Cape Town where I lived by the sea and, uh, you know, come sunset time. We very were, slow. We, we very were on slow the beach. Season. Um, you know, absolutely. <laughs> um, although changing, but we, we can discuss that at a later stage. Um, and I moved to Johannesburg and I got straight into the thick of it um, from, from Seapoint Cape Town directly into Joburg CBD. Um, very different lifestyle change. And... Um, you know, I started out as a property manager or a portfolio manager, um, managing the Mabuning precinct um, mm. in Joburg CBD. Were you with Mafadi? I was with, that was with Mafadi in my very, very first, uh, uh, let's, well, it's not, not such a corporate environment, but like um, formal job. Um, and it was full on. Hey, we managed about over a thousand tenants. We managed uh, the market. We managed the, the streets. We managed the body corporates. We managed, um, you know, kind of the rejuvenation of the area. Um, and what year was this? Was it 2014? That was the start of 2014. Mm -hmm. um, kind of with very little property management experience was thrown right into the deep end, managing the entire portfolio. 
Um, and that's so you're where I with got. Jono. Huh? You were working with Jonathan Lieberman. Yeah, I was working with Jonathan Lieberman, who did amazing things in, in Melbourne there. Yeah. Um, but let me actually just rewind a bit um, how I got there, because I think that's quite relevant and it's something that I'd actually like to touch touch on a little bit, is, you know, when I first decided to move to Joburg, I, I didn't really have a plan. What I decided to do is I called up a friend, asked him if I could crash on his couch, and I set up a bunch of meetings, no interviews, just, just meetings with people in the property industry. Um, mm. Flew, booked a one-way ticket to Johannesburg, came, crashed on my friend's couch uh, by the Oakland's petrol station there. Um, and I set up meetings. And two things you mentioned, one, that Cape Town was quite so, it was quite interesting. I, I met with the first person and uh, he said, yeah, you put me in touch with someone. You know, I met with the property developer and he said, you put me in touch with someone. And I was driving home and I get a phone call and... Uh, I answer the phone and he's like, how's it? This is uh, Jonathan. Uh, my, my friend John put me in touch with you. Yeah. And I couldn't believe the pace. I was just leaving the interview. Whereas in Cape Town, you know, you would have waited a week, <laughs> waited a two, maybe we would have heard. And I was immediately hooked and immediately blown away by the pace. I've got to be honest. I was like, that's why people come to Joburg, you know, just for, the, for that hustle. Um, so anyway, I, uh, I set up a couple of meetings. The one meeting that I have, I was fortunate enough to meet a guy by the name of Brian Isaac who was the CEO of Redefine at a, ta- at a stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said to me, he's like, what do you want to do? And I said that I want to be in property development, which is like the sexiest part of property, in my perspective, at least, you know, I love the building, I love the design and that type of stuff. And, you know, he said to me, he said, if you want to be, a good property developer, you need to be in property management. And I was very upset to hear that because contrary to development, management is the least sexy of everything property. Yeah. It's the hardest. It's the most hands-on, nitty-gritty, get down and dirty. Um, and he gave me some examples, which at the time I didn't necessarily understand. Um, but it, And they sound so obvious, but it couldn't rain more true. And he gave me a, a very silly example where he said... Um, you know, you want, you're a property developer with no management experience. You decide you want to build this magnificent office block and you do this triple story entrance, um, triple volume, should I say, entrance with these beautiful chandeliers and a water feature in the entrance. And you think this is magnificent. But until such time that you're in property management, you don't stop to think and go, right now, a light bulb blows. How do I change it? Yeah. I sat there like confused, thinking like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, what do you do? Do you hire scaffolding for 3,000 Rand for a day for every single time a light bulb blows? There's no step ladder that's going to get there. No, there's no, there's no step ladder. Or are you going to wait till a couple, um, you know, blow so that it, you know, you save some money, but now your, your entrance looks rubbish. Um, you know, you put in this beautiful water feature. What about the leaking onto a car in the basement below? And again, while that sounded like almost silly at the time, it couldn't be more true. Is that like really getting into the property industry which a lot of people want to do. And, and I think maybe I'm skipping a couple of steps here, but like that advice kind of give is that if you want to get into the property game and you really want to be good at it, um, you know, management is kind of the place to start um, to get a whole ro- holistic picture and letting management leases, maintenance, um, rental collection, whatever the case might be. Um, that's a great place to start. So, I mean, given the, the, the example or the analogy you've just given where, where your mentor says to you, start with property management what do you think apart from the property side what do you think were the learnings there i mean i I see humility in in your story to say that okay i'm going to start with the least and not the most amazing part of property but i'm willing to start where it's the hardest and it's the least desirable look i think um Whilst it is the least desirable, uh, that, 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 that advice is the most invaluable that I actually received in that you don't actually need an education. I didn't need a university degree. I did not need an honors degree. My man, you wasted four years in varsity. No, listen, it's not its merit, <laughs> but absolutely. The property yeah. industry, you can get stuck in. You know, you have to be prepared to do the hard work. You need to be prepared to... You, you, you know, you've got to have certain skills and, and you, you, you've got to have certain administrative skills and, and, and making certain calls and, and, and definitely understanding the property terms, um, you know, whether you're talking yield um, or, you know, understanding your levies and that type of stuff. But again, it is such like physical hands on management and such a like a role where, you know, you've just got to climb in that you don't actually need it. Like despite despite what people say, it definitely helps, but anyone can get involved. 
provided you're willing to put in the graft because it's hard. So how graft. did that make you feel? The fact that you had studied for four years and and now you you're realizing that what I actually needed was was to be hands on to begin with, to just leave. Oh, listen, I don't, I don't think any of it was a waste. I think there's 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 discipline involved in studying. I think there's not that I was a particularly good student. Mm. Um, I, I think there's a lot of discipline, and a teacher a lot it teaches you a lot of kind of like macroeconomics and and kind of um, you know how the how the outside world works. Um, whereas property management's kind of granular, and you're focused on let's call it one building at a time. Um, but no, you know it also. Further down the line, I've definitely used things um, in my career that I learned in varsity. Um, but yeah. So earlier on, when you started um, narrating your story, you said that the reason you went on to varsity to study property was because you've always known that's the industry you want to be in. How far back do you date the knowing of wanting to get into property and what sparked that interest? And I'll tell you something, a friend of mine, you, you know this friend of mine I'm talking about, Ronen, Ronen S, right? He says to me, witness, I, I got into business because from the time I was seven, I was being mentored to be in business by my father. He wanted me to take over the family business. Now, I didn't take it over. But I look back and I realize that although I run my own business now, the interest was sparked then by these conversations. So with you, how far back can you date uh, the knowing of wanting to be in the property industry? Well, I can tell you I had a completely opposite uh, childhood growing up. Uh, my family was not particularly business orientated. Uh, my family was about good food, good family times, and, uh, and, and, and love, to be honest, and, and not much business at all. Um, was it professionals? Um, hey? were, they, were they professionals? They were professionals, but that, w- that was never a focus in my, my, my household growing up. Um, ironically, I've now married into a family where um, business is, is a major, major part, and, and they were, my, my wife was groomed from a, from a young age um, to be involved in business, and she runs her own business, and she's amazing at it. Um, but just just to to answer your question, I mean, from as little as I don't know, also maybe seven eight years old, I remember um, designing my bedroom on a piece of paper, um, you know, drawing out the layout and, and and moving the beds, doing the floor plans, where I'd put cupboards, and designing my ultimate bedroom. I remember from a young age. So I've I've always had an interest in it from from a young young age, and kind of there was never really like much other consideration when it came time to picking my um degree in uh, when i was in matric and deciding what i wanted to do um there was always a decision between kind of property um engineering or architecture and yeah. there was never really anything else i never considered um accounting or, or or anything like that to be honest what does the confidence come from to know what you exactly want and you actually go for it it's kind of interesting. I don't know if I'd call it confidence at the time. Hey, I just, I just think that that's that's what I loved. That's mm. what I love. Yeah, yeah. So then you you met Jonathan, ended up being at Mafadi, and then how do you transition to now uh, starting Vesa, and then partnering with the, you know, the partners that you have and building this amazing well, business? That I think there were there were a, a, a few steps in between there. Um, yeah. Um, post well, well, while I was at Mafadi, we we helped set up the um, the a couple of the listed funds. They raised the management. Um, while this is not twenty fourteen. This is no. This is at the end of twenty fifteen. Um, I was working with some of the listed funds managing their property, um, where one of the um, asset managers from a listed fund decided to go on his own, and he then brought me along with him. Or um, kind of offered me a position there, which was kind of like too good to to turn down. Um, and we started a portfolio, um, a, a, a property portfolio, a small private fund, um, which we managed to actually grow very quickly. Um, we started out in, at the very end of 2015, and by early 2019, there were about a billion rands worth of assets under management. Um, we thought that we were going to be able to um, asset manage it and outsource our management, um, but just with property management is so hands-on. Um, that we actually brought the management in-house and landed up building a management team as well. Um, 
then for various reasons which I'm not going to go into to now um, and these are you know some of the, the the difficulties you have in business you know we, we, we decided to part ways myself and my partner um, and I was then fortunate enough to get an opportunity to go consult in Denmark um, for a while where we were turning a five-star hotel into residential um, apartments was that, um, so was that a struggling hotel or what um, no it just the the markets in Denmark at the time was 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 rife for for conversion for resi conversion there was a big opportunity um, the guys a, a, a fund had bought the hotel um, and wanted to flip it into residential um, apartments and and kind of brought me on to assist with that and that was an amo- amazing opportunity for me that that's Can I got imagine, to experience yeah. uh, um, quite cool things and, and and help with a really exciting project so with that one were you playing the role of project manager like seeing the entire project 360 from conversions all the way to management and then absolutely so, so so this was in the early days when um, you know we've got a couple of examples now in South Africa like the capital hotel where it's almost these apart hotels this was yeah. in the early days when these were kind of first built so from a from a physical renovation point of view it didn't actually require so much change yeah you know we had to add some walls um to make separate bedrooms to a more open plan you know some of these studios were huge and we could get two bedrooms out of them um but it was everything from from that from the layouts to um you know setting up a, a leasing team and a sales team we were doing sales and rentals all at the same time um, and kind of managing the process all around. And how, how many years do you spend in Denmark doing this work? No, it was a 10 week. Um, 10 in, weeks? 10 weeks um, yeah. to set it all up. Um, and then. How big was the hotel? Oh, it was ten, about. 10 weeks is what? Two and a half months. Yeah, it was about um, 150 units, if I remember correctly. Mm. Um, but as I said, it wasn't so difficult. It was just helping to, you know, to set it all up, um, you know, there were a couple of vacancies in the retail, which, you know, we, we, we helped uh, or I, I helped um, tenant and find the right tenant mix for a resi, for a resi building upstairs. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that, w- that was really cool. And then that's, after that, you moved back to SA? After that, I moved back to SA and uh, I then was looking kind of where where I was going to go and I landed up partnering. Are you cash flush? Are you, have you made some money in Denmark? What's going on at that uh, time? Are you job layers? I like? can't say on the record, but fortunately they paid me in cash because <laughs> they, they had no way of uh, kind of, uh, um, y- you know, like, like, like it, it was quite an informal kind of gig almost sure um but no i mean it was it was it was a really nice gig for me um it did allow me out you know definitely experience wise e- experience was great and, and it gave me a couple months just to be able to identify what i wanted to do um nothing major but the experience that was 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 sensational that i that i received there and also great for my cv um you know i think uh, international experience is always is always great you know if, if anyone has the opportunity to do it um just for the life experience, you know, if you, if you can, then I definitely recommend it. Um, then I landed up getting into business um, with another guy who I had known, um, you know, in the industry. Um, and we had decided to start an extremely exciting business um, where we were going to be developing affordable hotels. So that side, you were converting hotels to apartments. Rezi, now you come back to SA, you want to take apartments and make them hotels. Absolutely, yeah. It, so it, it, exactly. Intu- counterintuitive, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, exactly, know, but all kind of in the same field. So, yeah. you know, we, we had identified an extremely exciting opportunity. Um, and, was you it know, boutique hotels or large scale? Affordable. 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 Okay. affordable. That was the key. It was affordable. Sub 500 rand a night rooms. Sub uh, 500? Sub 500 rand. So, like, um, let's call it a really nice and well-managed motel almost. Sure. Okay. More like a Formula One. Like a Formula but One. Nicer. But nicer. I can yeah. imagine. Our, our model was we were offering a three-star hotel at two-star prices. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then through clever property management and clever systems, we were able to offer that service. Sure. Um, and we were doing it through um, a tax incentive called 12J. Um, mm, section 12J. Section 12J, which is... Yeah. Um, you know, no longer around actually. Um, but at the time it was... When did it end? Last year, 20, 2022, June, right? Yeah, around then. Around yeah. then. So we had raised all of our funds by the end of February. So we started in November. 
mm. November 2019. Um, sure, just before COVID. Well, that's where I'm getting I to. Get into that. <laughs> <laughs> that's why my name's not on any affordable <laughs> hotels anymore. But um, yeah, so November 2019, we started up this business. Um, you know, I was kind of brought on as the the operator, and uh, you know, my partners were kind of like um, the, the international experience kicks in now. Um, and yeah, by the end of February, all your, the, through 12 J, you've, you know, you've got until the 28th of February to get all your funds in 28th of February came, all our money was in. We had done an unbelievable raise. Guys were very keen um, to invest in this opportunity. We had further funding from the banks. First week of March, we were under extreme pressure to get going and allocate the funds and deploy the funds that we had raised. And we were looking to, um, build, develop, convert renovate four hotels that was our that was our plan four of them four to, how, to how start. many units each um i i can't remember exactly well I, I don't know we were looking at opportunity but we we're looking at anything north of north of 80 would have been good sure. units per um per scheme um that was the first week of march and by the third week of march we shut the whole business down by the third week of March. When, when, when lockdown was approaching, you know, I think, uh, you know, all the partners, we kind of sat around the table and recognized that we don't know what's happening in the world. Hospitality specifically is going to be absolutely annihilated, which it was. And, and what, what our biggest concern at the time was and what actually landed up happening is that, let's say, all these four-star hotels um, – we're going to struggle and go into liquidation and they were going to have to sell their properties. So people were going to now be able to pick up a four star ho a hotel at a two or a three star price. So now we wouldn't be able to compete with these guys. Um, you know, we could have looked to purchase those types of um, properties, but one, we didn't know what was going to happen and what the timelines were going to look like. And secondly, which is contrary to everything I said before, I didn't want to be in the hospitality game necessarily at the time, mm. right? We were offering what we were, what we were offering was a, almost a property management with the hotels. It was more property management than hospitality, hospitality, it's con concierge and it's pillow. It's a turn down service and there's, you know, laundry every single day. And there's, so you, you just know, wanted heads in and out. We were a property management business. We wanted to service, um, business travelers, um, guys on more of a budget. Um, it was a property management. Every, we were going to be automating it all. But um, so, yeah. I more mean, like an Airbnb model, but, uh, but yeah. on, on hotels. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. So that came to a wonderful halt um, very, very quickly. Mm. Um, How does one pick up from, from that? I mean, haven't put in the work. This thing is about to come into fruition. And then... An unfortunate disaster like COVID happens. Well, firstly, I mean, I think... And you have to uh, fold before you even start. I think a lot of people were in the exact same situation, if not, if not worse. You know, a lot of people got hurt, obviously, worldwide. Um, and that was a very, very scary time for me. Mm. I went into lockdown with no job and no business. Not knowing the future of the world, not knowing the future of the country and not knowing the future of my business or my next paycheck, to be honest. So that was one of the most scary times for me because I, I, I really had nothing. And, you know, <laughs> coming back from Denmark, you know, I did, I took, I took some time. Um, I really like spent time trying to work out what I was going to do. I didn't rush in, into anything, but now it was serious. <laughs> sure. And then how do you then, you're in lockdown? Obviously, you don't have a business at a time because you've just closed one um, and you don't have a job yet. What was going through your mind? What was going through my mind? Um, Were you fearful? Yeah, at the time, I was, I was, I was definitely fearful. Um, I really was concerned about what I would do. Um, I was quite recently married. Um, How many months married at the time? Well, I didn't want to say it earlier, but um, I got married about four months before I went to Copenhagen for 10 weeks, to Denmark for 10 weeks. Why well, I didn't actually stay longer um, mm -hmm. for the consulting program. Why well, I could only actually do 10 weeks, there was that. Oh, you're a new year, you <laughs> I try to leave that far out. <laughs> I to go back home. <laughs> but again, my wife being a, a business lady really recognized the opportunity for me. And, and sure. it was okay. It was definitely hard. It was definitely hard. Um, 
but she she recognized the opportunity and and we, we don't regret it but i could only stay uh so long they wanted me to stay on a couple months but unfortunately i couldn't um anyway so yeah i i think um there was definitely a sense of of panic and just do like i, I think uh I, I focused on a couple of things at the time one was getting into ridiculous shape because I, I had all the time. Yes. I thought, why not? Yes. Um, which I did. This is now still during COVID. No, still. this is very much hardcore lockdown. Um, I went on to Udemy and I bought a bunch of courses. Um, I bought um, some Revit and um, and and uh, AutoCAD and how to like kind of design going back going to my back very to basic. <laughs> basic. <laughs> the kid that was designing a bedroom yeah. is now wanting to start designing again. Absolutely, game. absolutely. Which is still my passion, by the way. That's still my ultimate goal. Um, yeah. Is is, is interior, interior architecture and design. Absolutely. Sure. Um, and at the same time, just like everyone else, I was trying to hustle with, uh, you know, the rapid tests and kind of seeing what I could do, um, you know, playing with the cards that I had at the time and trying to bring in medical supplies. Unfortunately for you, you couldn't get into PPE and make quick money. I tried. You? I tried. <laughs> I, I tried hard. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of red tapes around that. Uh, sure. that, that, that finger rapid test. I, I had that in the country within the first two weeks of lockdown. And, and you didn't make money from that? It was it, it was it was too hard to get it over the line, hey. And uh, I think it required a lot of backhand kind of stuff to get it. Oh, I'm, I'm, actually, no, it's not even fair to say it. W- it was too difficult to even get to the point where we where we could. I know some guys made it work, but I wasn't able to. Mm. Um, or maybe it was just not your thing. Yeah, maybe, maybe not at the time. I don't, uh, you know, now I don't particularly regret it or, or like I'm so not disappointed. You- but at the time, it was try everything. It was absolutely try everything. Like uh, I didn't have anything, mm. um, and then I landed up uh, giving Mafadi a call, my very first employer, um, the, the the CEO there, Simon, who I'd actually always had an amazing relationship, even post me leaving um, him at the end of 2015. Um, it's important to leave in good terms, isn't it? You got it. In in, in any circumstances, whether it's a relationship, whether it's. Uh, business partnership you know you never know when your paths are going to cross again um and you know i think we we kind of had always discussed doing something together again um and he was extremely um generous and and welcoming and and gave me the opportunity to go and consult for his business you know he also didn't know what was going to be happening with his business where um things would get tough you know people rent people weren't earning money you know them being a uh, property management business it's all yeah, about some people are losing jobs yeah now you got to keep your your vacancies down to minimal you got to keep your your collections up as high as possible but people don't have money what do you do people aren't going to work um so i landed up kind of going into his business on a consulting basis seeing where i could help there was no formal discussion like do this it was come into my business and see where you can help um and that's kind of where we rejoined forces that's where i am today um you know we we decided to open up the affordable sales business um within the mafadi group um and really just focusing on sales is that visa that's visa and that's how visa was that's how visa was kind of uh, formed visa properties and and subsequent to that you know we've kind of formed visa group within the group um, which focuses on sales, it focuses on um, education, and it focuses on actually short-term and Airbnb management. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's where we are today. So the entrepreneurial streak that you seem to be um, having, right, despite the fact that you say that, no, but in my family, there was nothing like that. Where do you think it comes from? I think... I think moving to Johannesburg had a fortune to do with it. I think I was just dropped into an entirely different world, a different planet. As I said, going from the beach in Cape Town to Joburg CBD. Shorts. Quite literally to Joburg CBD. I moved into Joburg CBD. I started living there and and I just started appreciating. I lived in Mabone. Mabone. We were working till 10 o'clock at night every single night. We were working Sundays. so it was safer for me to just go across the road than it would be for me to, you know, go via Ponty home to, to Sands Inside where, you know, I'd originally first moved to. 
Um, and it was just easier. I lived, eat, breathed, sleep, so slept. So you knocked off at 10. It started at what time? I mean, because what I love about what you're saying is that a lot of people could be listening and saying, I also want to be in property. I want to be like Neil. I want to build my own name in the industry. But they don't realize the amount of work it took for you to get to the level where if you say to Mafadi, I want to come back, they're like, oh, we've got a good guy there. He can come back. We can partner with him. We can do business with him. Look, I, I think there's no doubt. Like I said in the beginning, management is hands-on. It's full-on. And it's all the time. People, if you imagine, uh, if you're managing residential, for example, people are always living in their place. Um, you know, there could always be problems, whether it's maintenance. You know, you're dealing with a lot of um, almost inefficient um, organizations. You know, your your council is always difficult. Your your electrical supply. You're dealing with load shedding. People in offices. It's 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 not a very focused job. If I can say it's not, you're going to wake up and you know what you're dealing with. You know, I'm, today I'm going to focus on leasing. In property, you can be property management specifically. And I, I don't mm -hmm. say this to scare anyone. Sure. I say this to prepare no, people. No, you must scare them understand. if you have to, so that they <laughs> understand what it takes. Look, and, uh, it, 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 your day could be filled with anything. Whether it's rental collection, a legal case, a burst geezer, flooding, you know, flooding, fires, which are, which are very relevant and are very relevant you know, within the Jovic CBD context. Um, but again, if you want to be successful in property, that is without a doubt the best place to start and the best place to have the most man uh, experience, mm. for sure. It doesn't make it easy. It doesn't make it pleasant. And it's, and it's not necessarily enjoyable. I'm not sure to try sugarcoat anything because, you know, let's say you're in, in management, you know, you've got the tenants shouting at you, one thing, you've got the landlord shouting at you, another, the landlord saying, why haven't they paid their rent? The tenant saying, oh, no, you haven't fixed this. And, you know, it's not a very thankful job. Um, but the experience is like no other. And, and really, it can set you up for, for wherever you want to go within property next. So when you look back on, on your journey, né? and you think of the time where you had the opportunity to start the sub 500 hotel business and and that didn't happen and you had to close it and now having gone through COVID and COVID was done does a part of you wish you kept the business and rode the storm no i i don't think so at all like uh i'm a firm believer of everything happens for a reason i i, I truly truly am um for the good and the bad um and i kind of live my life like that because, you know, th things, things aren't always going to be easy. Um, but no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy where I am. I'm very happy, um, you know, to be able to, to offer people um, products or services that, that help people, whether it's investing, um, property education, whether it's, you, you, you know, now the, even the hotel management, um, you know, giving people really awesome holidays and experiences, it's, it is nice to be part of that. Um, so no, I, I don't think so. And I, th I think a lot of awesome opportunities have come out of this and the group that I'm involved with now, I love the people, the, the people that we work with, we, we have a good time. Um, and that stuff's equally as important, eh? who you work with, like your, your environment is just as important as what you're doing. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. So. I, I I know that I've tried to come. I've tried to get you to come speak at uh, our seminars, which we have eventually. <laughs> you came on a Sunday, <laughs> on a Sunday, and, and you wouldn't come on a Saturday. You, you wouldn't budge. You'd be like, "Nah, that's a sa Shabbat." It's a Shabbat, yeah? exactly. So, what are the things that you've learned from your faith as a as a Jewish man, or, or from the Torah that you think have helped you <laughs> in your journey in business? Okay, well, this this is nice and interesting. Um, I think um, there's a couple of things. Um, from my perspective, the one is definitely treating people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. For me, that's uh, um, one of the most important kind of fundamentals of business. Um, but also, I don't think necessarily think it's always going to get you the furthest in business, ironically and sadly. Really? Yeah. I, I think Explain the it, two. I, I, I don't know. It's kind of always a bit of a challenge that I've, I've experienced in business is that 
a lot of people don't do that um, and a lot of people succeed like that the more kind of cutthroat you are in business you know often and and the two don't they don't they're not necessarily mutually exclusive you don't have to be cutthroat and a horrible person by by any means but um i think a lot of the times it's kind of like hindered my business kind of progression i i, I believe that it will all kind of, kind of come back to me in the end i'm not tr trying to sound like a senior but i think often i'm too nice to staff too nice to employees and that's come back and bit me quite a bit mm -hmm. um and i think but I, I i do think that that's a that's a quite a nice approach um to business um again they don't have to be separate um it's just something i kind of struggle with a bit um and secondly you say like i can't come to you on uh on, i can never come on a saturday, on a saturday yeah. um, and, that, and that's something that we do on our, our sabbath it's the day of i don't rest. remember calling you on a saturday and finding you no, no, exactly. It's our, it's our day of rest. And that's also been one of the best things for business for me is that from a Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, my phone is off. It does not switch on. It never switches on. My TV doesn't switch on. I don't switch on. I don't get in my car. And that really allows me or, or gives me the opportunity to rest and, and recover. And, so and do you get walk ready. to synagogue? I walk to synagogue, absolutely. Right. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people are missing in today's day and age. There's no doubt about that is disconnection. The disconnection, We have our yeah. phone on us 24-7. We wake up to a message. We go to sleep to, to our cell phones, to social media, to this. And the disconnect is the best thing in the world for me. Um, and for all my friends and family who, who who do the same thing. It's like, we almost don't understand how people don't do it. Like it's so important to disconnect. And I think in this day and age um, in business, and, and I learned this the other day, I was actually at a seminar. Um, I heard this and one of the most underrated thing and oh, not just underrated, one of the things that people don't do nearly enough is think, is stop to think is we just go, we go, we go, we go. We're always moving ahead. We're always trying to get the next deal. We're always trying to grow our business, but we're in such a, a, a fast paced environment that nobody takes the time, well not nobody, but a lot of people don't take the time to stop and actually think and to consider, right, what am I doing well? What am I not doing so well? What can I cut? What can I improve? Like, maybe I need to spend more time with my family. Maybe, you know, I need to exercise more, whatever, but like actually taking the time to stop and think, I think is, is hugely important. Mm. What do you think is the biggest challenge when it comes to young people that you've employed over the years? I mean, that you've worked with, uh, where there's a bottleneck when it comes to their growth and their development and moving into the next level? Look, I, I think, um, and you know, th this has been quite relevant for me in the sales and rentals business. But I'm just trying to think, I don't necessarily think it's been such a, a, a difference between the young and the old. So it's generally. I think what I've come across is people who are motivated and people who are not. Mm. And in my industry specifically, I think there's, you know, guys who are just keen to go and make money and people who are kind of happy to just be. Um, and if that's your style, that's... You know, there's nothing wrong. Not, money's not for everyone, but I think in, when you're in the when you're in the commission <laughs> game, <laughs> I like how you. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, in the commission game, when you're earning your own paycheck, you have to be. You have to be a fighter. You have to be hungry. You have to be a lion. Otherwise, you're just never going to make it. But um, is a, a lot of cutthroat competition. I mean, given the fact that you explained the fact that you would say. Uh, the approach where you were like, treat everyone the way you want to be treated. As a business, you could have been that as well, right? And only to find that the other side or the other competitors are quite cutthroat. Is the environment cutthroat uh, at that level? Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, when, when I started, and you spoke about the challenges earlier that I, that I faced, you know, when we started this, this affordable sales business, um, in COVID, in lockdown, when we started, you know, interest rates were seven percent. Yeah, everybody was buying up. Property. Interest rates are no longer seven percent, and yeah. you know, it's it's already much more difficult. And you speak about these challenges; it, it's tough. You know, you've got an environment again, and I don't like to use the the that as an excuse because you've just got to find other ways of making it work. 
right? But sometimes you can't make it work. So in the sales side, you know, we've kind of pivoted and we focus quite aggressively on rentals, as an example. You know, as interest rates go up, you know, your investors kind of come more into the market as buyers, um, mm-hmm. as opposed to, let's say, first-time homeowners. Um, because the rentals increase, the, the rental market increases as interest rates goes up because not everyone can afford to buy a property More people and the then rent. your investors come. So now, and that's why we're kind of focusing quite a, quite a strong emphasis on the Airbnb or short-term rental management business that we, you know, we're kind of pumping a lot of effort into because that's where our market is at the moment. Yeah. So do you have any advice for the individual that wants to get into, I know you do corporate, right? You're, I mean, you don't necessarily classify yourself as corporate, but that's what people call you guys, right? So, but what, what advice do you have for that individual that wants to start? The young Neil that wants to start out, that wants to do property, be it Airbnb, be it buy to let, be it development. I know I, you've I already it, told them to get into property management. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think on a more like kind of, you, you know, kind of, I, I have been to places and, and things have abruptly ended and opportunities have, have opened and, and things get tough, things, things get easier. Um, and that's not to be emotional about things. Um, you know, I think if you're, if you're in business for the money, um, I don't mean this in a greedy way. I don't mean this in like a follow the money in that you can pump your heart and Jerry soul Ma- into that. Have you watched Jerry, Jerry Maguire? Um, I actually haven't. Show me the money, Tom Cruise. Show me the money. <laughs> yeah. oh, I mean, that's it. Like, I, I think um, I haven't elaborated on this so much that so this might sound a bit out of context, but like, you know, these things happen. You try to start a business and then something comes and, and, and kind of slaps you in the face. Or, you know, you pour your heart and soul, everything you do, you're going to pour your heart and soul into it. But, you know, if it's not working out, cut your loss and move on. Again, I haven't really spoken about that so much, but that's kind of been the, my career at the moment. So if you're not happy where you are, find a place where you're going to be happy. Um, and all of it is experience. You're going to gain experience. You're going to, you know, you're going to get other views and, and, and that only benefits you. If you're not happy in your place, but you're getting the right experience, you know, think, ask yourself, what is this worth it? Is what I'm currently receiving is it is it worth my time is it worth the pain and is it worth the aggravation and that answer might be yes doesn't that have to be a permanent thing mm. but but whatever circumstances you're in you need to kind of like weigh up um and 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 understand what am i getting out of it and where is this going to take me next because at the end of the day you know we're all looking out for ourselves and our families we've all got to do what's in the best interest of our family of the people around us and and, and that's ultimately you know why, or, or for yourself, depending on you know, you know your circumstances, um, but but yeah, I, I think there's a. I mean, there's a couple of messages out of that, but I, I think that you know, whatever you're doing now, I, I don't think it's a waste of time. I, you, you're always learning, you're always kind of gaining experience, and you just use that for the next thing, mm. or or for now. So, how, how did you master the art of of letting go? I mean, you seem. I mean. I can't imagine building a, a billion rand portfolio and be like, okay, ciao guys, I'll <laughs> see you. Um, this this it didn't work. Uh, we're just letting it go. I'll move on to the next thing. Then the next thing doesn't work. You're like, you know what? It's okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out. <laughs> um, I have far I, I mean, from mastered from, that from, art. From somebody watching, they could be thinking, this guy easily lets go of things. Is it that easy? I mean, no, it's the exact opposite. I'm terrible at it. I'm absolutely terrible at it. And which is why, you know, I, I think that is my advice because I'm, I'm, I'm explaining it to myself at the same time. Um, leaving that, that, that fund was extremely tough for me. Um, you know, being extremely excited about the hotel business um, and then COVID hitting, I was devastated. Um, you know, now, now, you know, I'm, I'm in a better place. But at the same time, you know, um, you know, we start, started Visa Properties, the sales kind of side. And at one stage, it was a much more exciting business than it is today. Um, you know, and I'm not going to pretend like it's unbelievable. It's much tougher. It's far harder out there. And, you know, I could sit and pump my heart and soul into it. Or we could say, right, what else can we do to make this business better? 
Um, and whether maybe that's, you know, the, the Airbnb business, for example, that, that we've started, um, you know, that helps our investors. We're doing sales through through that to our investors. We're helping investors offload properties. Uh, you know, we're helping developers um, kind of offload more units through the Airbnb management space. Um, the education side as well, um, you know, kind of, in, you know, finding ways that we can make the business work or hedging your bets and saying, right, like, I'm going to do this X, Y, and Z and see, like, right, where where is going to... Where is going to, let's, as I said earlier, where's the money? Um, and I don't know if this is the best advice, to be honest. I don't know if this is the right advice. Uh, I'm not a business mogul in any way. As I said in the beginning, I'm a regular guy. This has kind of been my, this has been my attitude. But to, to, to answer your question, no. Uh, I think uh, letting go of something that you pour your heart and soul is, is tough. Um, but it has to be done. There's no other option. There is no other option. Mm, mm. So you spoke about Vesa Academy, and and the fact that it's an education business. Um, what what do you guys offer there for the ordinary, for the other regular guys, for the other regular guys? I, I think yeah. you know, as as I said earlier, you know, getting into the property industry, you don't necessarily need education um, in the property space. Yeah, I think there's a lot of unemployment out there, and you, I think you, there's. What a, do you need? You need to get your your teeth kicked out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that, but that's exactly it. You know, I, I, there's a lot of people who are unemployed, and there's a lot of opportunity in the property industry which doesn't require education. So we're trying to kind of bridge that gap, um, where we educate people to get into the property management space, whether it's through building management, um, property management, that type of stuff, um, as well as um, education um, within the developments that we sell, or you know, some of our clients, um, and some of it seems very obvious. So. Uh, you know, we've got developers who sell affordable, uh, social housing and the property registers and then they get their bill. They're like, what the hell is this levy statement that you've just sent me and why do I have to pay it? Mm -hmm. And again, mm -hmm. it sounds very obvious, but to a lot of people it isn't. The so, municipality. Yeah. Why do I have to pay this it, it, thing? And somebody exactly. says, but I've paid this thing. And why that's do I have to pay it the despite being in the, the, the offer to purchase. And, um, you know, so we, we, we help guys, um, you know, educate the, the, the buyers on... Um, you know the costs involved and that type of stuff and I, um, you know what is a levy why do you have to pay it and again while it might seem obvious to, to you especially as a property owner to a lot of people it's not um, and then I think as well uh, the, quite a big focus of it is to is we run kind of buyers nights and in, in explaining to people even tenants that you can actually buy a lot of people actually have no idea that they are capable of buying and you know I think uh you speak about a lot of the stuff in your books and in your talks as well is, is that a lot of people don't know what they can actually is it an affordability is it a knowledge issue or or they think it's an affordability issue well they think it's purely based on affordability mm. or they you know not necessarily what they can or can't afford they don't understand that you could potentially be paying the same to buy your place than you are on your rentals you know, sure. we've got a lot of um, stock which is cash flow positive, um, you know, from day one. And what is cash flow positive? Your, the rental income that you'd get from an investment point of view will cover your bond, it will cover your rates, and it will cover your levies. Okay. Obviously, it's a bit more difficult as interest rates go up, but those opportunities do exist. So if that exists, then as a renter paying that rent, it means that it could cover your bond, your rates, and your levies. Absolutely. Um, and, and people are blown away when they hear that fact because the banks are lending. They're, they're lending 100%, um, you know, which means that you don't have to put down a deposit. A lot of the developers are offering their, their they're building the purchase, uh, the, the, the cost, sorry, into their purchase price. So you're not necessarily paying bond and transfer costs, in which case in certain, certain circum circumstances, it doesn't always exist, but you can put down zero rand. And you can be paying the same as what you're paying on rent and own your property. So we try to spend time kind of educating guys on that. And, and again, that helps the buying business. Mm. What does the future look like now? What does the future look like? I cannot answer that question. Because you didn't know what it looked like in 2019. No, when but you went before. Yeah. absolutely. I have no idea. I think a lot of people, unfortunately, are very pessimistic about this country at the, time, at the moment. Um, I think the sentiments especially from high level investors are low, mm. um, you know, selling a building 
today is not as easy as it was selling it a couple of years back. But my kind of philosophy is that while you're here, you put your head down and you work as if it's going to be amazing. Mm. Otherwise, you must leave. True. Why? And most it, people it, who leave do come back, don't they? Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> you know, South Africa has always been an amazing place and it is an amazing place. So whether you're optimistic, pessimistic, while you are here, it's head down and, and focus. Assume that it's going to be amazing. Mm. Because mm. You, you don't want to live in no man's land. You don't want to be wasting your time here and not going there or, you know. Because you think. could be trapped if you do that, isn't it? Yeah. You're here but not here. I think wherever you are, you've got to make the most of it. But I think people, a lot of people have been like, oh, this country, I'm not going to do X, Y, and Z. Okay, maybe, you know, certain investments, may, maybe you're not going to make any more. But while you are here, it's head down and assume the best. Do you have a favorite quote? A favorite quote? Yeah. Uh, now you put me on the spot, eh? Hey? Um, I'm going to think about this and then I'll, I'll, I'll come bring it back to you. What's your favorite book? Apart from mine, of course. My favorite book, <laughs> oh, I was going to say. Um, my favorite book is a book called The Hard Thing About Hard Things. Um, mm. And it basically, it was given to me when I, um, when I was starting the, the affordable hotel business by, by my partner at the time. Um, and it just kind of ex explains to you how to get through the hard things that people don't like talking about. Maybe whether it's like, um, promotions or demotions within your business, um, you know, maybe working with a friend and how to keep that relationship separate, um, you know, and I think it's, it's dealing with, it, it deals with things that people don't like to deal with, but that will be there one way or another when, when running a business or starting a business or. Mm. Um, Has it taught you to be more confrontational about stuff that you don't like? It definitely. Did you ignore matters before you read the book or? It's just something you evolved into over time. Um, no, I, I think it just gives you more of a step-by-step -step guidance on how to deal with it. So just dealing with it more efficiently um, and better. Um, you know, there's certain things you can't avoid. Um, but this just helped me kind of systematically deal with those things. Yeah. So I usually say to guests that that camera is for them. Okay. <laughs> and there's a guy <laughs> sitting at home there and and he needs some form of motivation, some form of inspiration, some form of knowledge that you think he might need to be it. He wants to be in property or business or it doesn't work at all. And he's looking at you saying, ah, but this guy is just white privilege. This witness guy he was just privileged as well. I mean, what would you say to that guy just to help him out of the rut that he's in if he's in one? Okay. Um, I, I think, I think I've kind of like covered it within my talk, but at the end of the day, I think things are tough. Um, things, things aren't so entirely optimistic, um, at the moment, but I don't think that you can consider that. I don't think you, that you, 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 you need to set that aside. Um, and understand, right, this is what I need to do in order to make my life, um, you know, take my life to where I want to be. And I, I, I think um, the way to do that is avoid the how. Mm. Okay, I think there's a, there's a lot more to it. But when I say avoid the how, is that there's, there's, you know, you've got your goals in life, you, I want to achieve X, and then you start thinking, right, how am I going to do this? Um, how am I going to like um, do this? You know, this might be in my way. This might be in my way. Um, life comes at you with challenges. So set something up, pick a target and do, and just do, do, do. As I said earlier, you know, whether you optimistic or pessimistic about this country while you're here, you put your head down and you do. It might work, it might not work, but the only way you're ever going to find out is by doing. And I think that's at the end of the day what it comes down to is 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 doing. We don't know what the future holds. Um, we don't know what is the best route for us, whether we're meant to be in this industry or not. Um, but unless you do, you will never know. So if you're sitting there and you maybe don't have a job or you, you're deciding between jobs, pick one and do. Find one. It might not be the most glamorous, like property management versus development. It might not be where you want to be today. Mm. 
life will take you places too. And that's, sure. that's it. It's amazing, man. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you for the opportunity. I, I always appreciate, uh, I appreciate the opportunity you. to speak with you and, and to, to, to guide alongside you and to learn from you. Uh, I think I, you know, I sat in your talk, I've, you know, read your book and, and I, I've learned some fortune as well. So I'm, I'm really appreciative of that as well. Thank you, my brother. Cool. Much appreciated. <laughs> Guys, get in and do. It might not be the thing that will move you to the next level, but perhaps it might be. Who knows? Um, like you say, comment. Let us know what part of this conversation resonates with you. Let us know what inspired you. Let us know what you're going to use to get to the next level. But whatever it is that you're going to use, man, just put your head in the sand and, and work like you say. You know, and if you haven't subscribed, please click on the subscribe button, click on the notifications bell, comment, let us know what your thoughts are, like I said. And for myself, broadcasting, it's not live, but broadcasting from Johannesburg, uh, from my team and I, it's more than just money. Ciao, ciao. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Director. Mr. Producer, Director, slash...